Hello, everybody, and hey. welcome to the recap. That's Pastor Stewart, and that's me. I'm Pastor Andy, and we're going to talk about the things that uh, he talked about, you talked about a little bit this past Sunday. It was a little strange. Yes. Uh, we'll dive right in, yeah. and the weather that was yep. on everybody's mind Sunday. Yep. Yeah, we have a scientific word for what all happened Sunday. It's called weird. We try to monitor the weather very closely, and when it's iffy, we try to wait as late as possible. So we decided to wait till six o'clock Sunday morning. Realized that was a mistake. Sorry about that. But the forecast could not give us any definite answers, which it never can. But it was really, if they were absolutely accurate, we still couldn't figure it out. And so at six o'clock, some of us were covered in snow, and some didn't have much. So we made the call, and uh, we had to, we had a skeleton crew basically here uh, to to record a service. And so I didn't want to preach the sermon I'm going to preach this Sunday. I had it ready last Sunday. But I took a part of it out, and we talked about some yeah. things. So. And something else we're going to do yes. um, going forward is we've looked into a way yes. to uh, do a texting message system for, for an emergency. This is just for emergency. Yes. Not, not any announcements like, hey, we're having a special Bible right. study on Sunday night. But an emergency text uh, procedure. Right. And, and though it doesn't cost a lot, it does cost some. So we're not going to overuse it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that too. So just so you know that that's coming, and you'll hear more about that, a little smidge more on Sunday, and uh, a follow-up And I would even that. say we did, learn from our, we did learn a lesson from our mistake, and so we have decided in the future we will make those decisions no later than 6 p.m. on Saturday. Right. Um, it was fascinating. The weather, the weather this yeah. past Sunday was, if you lived within a mile radius as the crow flies from this location, you would have been fine. You really yeah, would have. It much. was not a problem. Right. Uh, it was kind of a rain almost. Right. Uh, you know, it was laying on the grass, but not on the roads. So you know, that was hard, hard to do. So anyway, yep. you live and learn. One of those. Um, but we. Uh, but then see. Monday, uh, yeah. just in case you can see the nice white tape. Um, <laughs> That's I, not I, tape for your microphone. No, and I did not cut myself shaving. Um, it, I, I had a minor surgery. Uh, one of those basal cell carcinomas there beside my ear. So uh, I had a lot of fun there, and that will actually come into play later when you ask me another question. But okay. uh, went to the doctor Monday and had that. <laughs> we we wrote away. out we wrote out questions on Always. the phone today. That's we're getting high tech. Yes, yeah. we don't rehearse it, but we do know kind of what we want to talk about. <laughs> <coughs> right. Okay. Um, Pastor Stewart, uh, one of the things that y we've heard you talk about from the pulpit is this Bible study. <laughs> that's the I think that's right. the best way to call it. It's yeah. a it's yeah. a Bible study. Without saying the words Justin or <laughs> Senegal or Africa, yes. what is it? It and is, and yes. how are you doing with it? Because it, you've been going through right. it. It is a, um, it, it is a modified for the American audience um, thing that uh, the original name of it was Tree of Life, and it was modified by a man in our area to uh, to help fit it more into our culture. And it well, what does it do? Yeah. What it, yeah, and it, what it does, there's is it 11, 11 lessons. Four of those are challenges and explanation, or if you want to use the word apologetic, to the Christian for what the Christian ought to do with the rest of it. And the rest of it, so 11 minus 4 is 7, there are seven lessons that are basic doctrinal lessons. Mm -hmm. So you could take a brand new Christian and you would give them a pretty good solid base. You know, there's pro always more but at least some very basic base. You could take a, a, an older Christian like myself and I'm gonna be challenged. I'm gonna maybe see new things in scripture, but it is, it is done in such a way that it is, in, it is so reproducible, and I don't mean on a copy machine or by text. I mean that it's easy I to learn teach. it. I could just share it with you. Easy yeah. to repeat. And we use that word teach and that kind of scares people, but yeah, we could teach it. And that's the word we do use. But but it's really just a sharing of principles and doctrine that we find in the Bible. Um, and it, what, sometimes we hear that word doctrine, we think it's like real high minded mm -hmm. and a lot of Straight education. Forward. If, if you don't have doctrine, you don't know why you can mm -hmm. be saved or anything For else. instance, give so us a for instance, one thing that it teaches. Well, uh, for instance, um, it teaches the basis of our salvation, that Christ made a sacrifice for us on the cross. Um, and uh, and so how that works, why that, why that works and how do you access that? So that's, of course, an early lesson. Mm -hmm. um, or this past uh, Monday. I wasn't there because I was getting that. Okay, a couple of days ago, it talked about um, 
I think it was Lord's Supper and baptism, but it may nice. have just been one of those. It was at least Lord's. No, it was both because it we was, had. Yeah, to, I, I remember yeah. we. It was two times we broke to teach each other. That's part of yes. the technique, right. the pedagogy of this system. Hmm. That Big words. Of that. It I don't makes know. it makes the person, the person that's participating in it, explain it to someone yes. else. Yeah. So it's almost a talk amongst yourselves, and it's amazing right. how much you actually do or don't right. don't know about it. And I gr- I grew up a Baptist, and and of course I had opportunity to get a lot of biblical education and uh you know new things are opening up about things we know the the most successful people in the world and the most complicated things do the basics well and uh as a baptist learning about baptism it might surprise you how many people in a baptist church truly don't understand right. there's more than one kind of baptism and uh so Keep listening, and one day you may hear us say what those yeah. are. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is the high accountability factor. Yes. And oh, wow. uh, yeah. we are required to uh, write down on a piece of paper, it's right. real simple, uh, how many people did you share the gospel with this past it's week? It's embarrassing to put zeros And, <laughs> you know, my numbers have been like one, two, right. things like that. And they're challenging us to, oh, right. to five. And they're nobody's five. ever fussing about it. It's just, no. you, they just it's ask you to write it down. Yeah. Yeah, it's Good self-convicting. Word. So yes. anyway, that's what I really like yeah. about that. So let's I've go to our it. let's go and, to our next thing. Go ahead. Did you ask me how it affected me, or is that a yeah? How question? how how are you doing with well, that? Well, uh, and that's where the surgeon comes back in. So I just determined that I would try to speak about Christ or the church or do something and some I kind of wanna, spiritual yes, element to your conversation. A, you know, at that visit because I knew I'd be there for a little while, mm-hmm. and. Um, and, and so I did, and I don't want to say too much because it was a personal right. conversation with somebody about their personal things, but I was at least able to ask and ask what their support was, offer help through the church. Um, they, they were church. They did know Christ as well. And, um, but, but just because I was making that effort, it made me aware that you ought to make that effort. Right. And uh, just those little hints and doors opened, and I was able to have a very nice conversation with someone. Um, so it helps me in that. Um, it really pushes us to get outside right. of our little schedule or route or whatever. Yeah. I'm a delayed, bold person. Like, I don't ever want to take that first step, but brother, when I take the first step, I'm good to go. I'm in. And, uh, I'm in. It, and so, yeah, the, it, it encourages me to take that first step, I would mm-hmm. say. Let's move on to sure. uh, our next question. This thing the supernatural. You mentioned yeah. some things about the supernatural in Sunday's message. Right. So unpack that. What, what did you talk about? Well, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't read the questions that long ago, <laughs> but um, it, it kind of, wow, what do I say about that? And there is what we, that word is very broadly applied. So mm-hmm. you can watch shows on aliens or yeah. ghosts. There are a lot of that. movies about the supernatural, super. Bigfoot. A lot of people believe Bigfoot is supernatural if he exists. Keep going. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, anyway, <laughs> I thought about this the other day. Do the creatures or beings that live in the supernatural, i.e. angels or whatever else the God created, world. Mm-hmm. Do, they, do they call us supernatural because we're outside of their natural? <laughs> are we subnatural? Mm. Man, that's real close to right. how many angels can dance on a Yes, okay. it is. <laughs> and so that's kind of my point that, mm-hmm. um, you know, I grew up hearing about heaven and angels and all these miraculous things, but they are a physical reality somewhere. We, you know, it's debated where that is. The Bible objective just, reality. Yeah, 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 objective. And at times, heaven's a physical place. It's a real place. There it's are horses real. there that Jesus... He's going to ride one of them back, and we're going to be riding other ones with him back when he comes back. And that's real. It's visible. It's touchable. After his resurrection, there could be a locked room, and suddenly he'd be in it, yet he could eat. Could, they could touch mm-hmm. him. So the supernatural is just beyond what we know or our ability to know because we can uh, know that intellectually, but we can't necessarily experience it in that way. So th- that's a bigger, broader thing. I mm-hmm. think when we're talking about the supernatural, um, there, is a, a, there is a supernatural reality, and so there is a good and a bad reality there uh, because God created all things. Satan rebelled, but he was a supernatural creature. Using the word reality, and I use the word reality differently. Okay. Reality is all that is. Yes. 
Um, and I know this is batted around a lot. Some people will say, well, that's not my truth. That's not my yeah. reality. Right. There are multiple realities, things like that. And, you know, in our not language, really. we tend to do it. There is one, one reality. reality. Yes. And so I with many facets, some of yes, which we can't access. Yes. And, and our colloquial Fully. way of saying it is, is, uh, well, the reality is or that's yes. not his reality. It, that it's a poor way yeah. of doing it, but I know I, I get what you're saying. Right? Okay. Yeah, it's not I'm, the Spider-Man multiverse. No. Okay. That's and, <laughs> and what I am saying is that sometimes if you grow up in church, you've heard these stories all your life. You think of them, not that they're not true, but that maybe there's not. It is not really real. It's like there's just this thing. And so for the Christian. We do live in two worlds because the Bible says once we uh, bow the knee to Christ, once we receive the salvation he offers, the Holy Spirit literally lives inside of us. So that is a concept that I still can't quite get a hold of. But Paul talks about it and says we have this treasure, the treasure of the very person of God, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, inside a clay pot which is what he's talking about mm -hmm. our body mm -hmm. that we're made of clay and we have a lot of cracked pots out there and yet the holy They're spirit all yeah the holy spirit pots. lives mm -hmm. in the believer um so that is the supernatural existing with it and in ephesians he also says that we are already seated in heavenly places in christ yet we live in this world and this is our common i i, I don't know the terms to use but just coming up with this one this, this is our common reality this is we eat here, we sleep here, we wake up here, we work here, but there, but there the, is more. The world we can't see with our physical eyes is. That's why I was using that word it reality. Is there? It's real. It's almost. It's I like part to of think, God's reality. Think of it a little bit more in terms of territory. Yeah, I, I find that helpful. Is uh, I I cannot see that realm um, or that territory, uh, yeah. but occasionally God gives us glimpses yeah. of that and that's in scripture. So with that in mind, um, what are some things we can do to keep us alert right. that there is more? Um, and there again, this, this is a cautionary tale because, um, there is a evil in the world we can't see. Um, you're not going to recommend getting a Ouija board and seeing how no, close to evil no, no, you no. can get. <laughs> and don't go see, you know, a psychic because they're either right. They're either lying and fooling you or worse. They're real mm -hmm. <laughs> because God does. God, God says what we need to know is in here. And so I would say if I want to know more about the supernatural, I only stay in the step scripture. one. That's number one. And don't be curious about things that weren't given to us. And then there, there's a saying about that. Because in the Christian world, there are preachers and people that will say, well, God revealed this to me, or I need a word of prophecy spoken to me. Well, here's the deal. If, if it's in the Bible, like you, some people use this term, I need a word of prophecy, like somebody tell me something mm -hmm. that's from God. Well, if it's in the Bible, it's not necessary to receive a word from God because you can read it and you ought mm -hmm. to be reading it. If it is a new word it's a heresy mm -hmm. because this, this is, is done this is done it's complete and yeah. so when i need a word from god i open this and this mm -hmm. book is a supernatural book in the sense of it tells us about the supernatural but the very nature of it how it was written mm -hmm. how accurate it is how it's been preserved is only could have been done by god through mm -hmm. history and time mm -hmm. so this is our, our source of our information and and then that will sensitize you to God and his leading, which takes us into that supernatural world. And for whatever feelings, impulses, thoughts we have, then we know to go back here to make sure that our, th you know, cause I come up with a lot of good ideas, I think, but they may not be God's ideas. And so I go back to here to make sure it's not a violation of what he's already revealed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for, for us in North America, the supernatural is alien to us because we have so much, so many things. We have technology, we have possessions. <laughs> yeah, they're distractions. Mm -hmm. You go to a place where the people are not uh, as Techno abundantly. Technologically advanced. For yeah, sure. or yeah. yeah, the things, I, I don't want to say they're disadvantaged because they probably have better advantage than we do. The spirit world is very real to them um, in, in the sense that they see manifestations of activity and things. And, you know, and these are, these are coming, these, they're not sourced from like, 
this is a source from Christians, like missionaries and all have mm-hmm. seen strange things happen and know that that is the supernatural world work. And Satan's big way of working in America is to convince us he doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that there's no reality there, you know. Um, so but ca- though you and I are Star Trek nerds, <laughs> um, both of us, uh, the, or Star Wars, but the, the guy that wrote Star Trek did not believe in the supernatural. He thought everything was explainable and scientific, and of course everything happened by chance. And, and his dream world was, if you notice, they don't pay money for anything on Star Trek, at mm-hmm. least on Earth, mm-hmm. um, because there's no currency, and it's <laughs> the utopia of the, mm-hmm. only God can make that utopia because the greed of man will always come in. And I do appreciate in the series, <laughs> there's always some greedy guy gets in there. But that, but that is kind of our point, that we have so much here that we forget that there is a supernatural world. So step one, go to the Bible. Get in the Word. Well, get saved. <laughs> That's a supernatural uh, Yeah, I'm talking about Christians to yeah. remind ourselves that of the supernatural. And then go back to go the here. Bible and then go back again. <laughs> yeah. Stay in the Word and pray. Uh, that's literally God is hearing me now, mm-hmm. and I know that because he's God. Mm-hmm. But I can literally have a conversation with the creator so maybe, of the universe. Maybe with our prayers, we don't start, don't jump right in with requests. Right. How about acknowledging oh, of who it's he so is? It's so easy to do that yeah. too. Yeah. Spend seven minutes on uh, yeah. acknowledging who Set he is. Set a timer. Yeah. I've and done, if you run, I've done that. And if yeah. you run out, yeah, just just to discipline yourself to do it mm-hmm. longer or something. I'm not going to ask for anything for three minutes. Yeah. You know, it helps. It, I guess it's on our Facebook or our YouTube. You can look up. Uh, we had Brad Russell, pastor, come talk about prayer. And you mm-hmm. can look that up on. It's on our sources. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Our website, whatever. And, and I would encourage that because he did an excellent job of teaching us how to pray the Bible. And I think that would be a good, good thing to do. Yeah. And we're going to end on that. So yes. uh, last time we said, Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday. And we'll say the same thing yes. this Sunday. Uh, we're recording this on a day where it's really, really nice out. The weather is so nice. It's supposed to get but up to like 61, 62. Yeah, but it's going to rain. Yeah, the there's going to blow about 50 miles an hour. Well, yeehaw. So we hope that we see you on Sunday. Goodbye, everyone. Yes.